Today we're hiking the Munns Wagon Trail to Merry-Go-Round Rock to get this iconic photo. But as I head out, I ride past Carefree Highway, which inspired Gordon Lightfoot to write his hit song, Carefree Highway. It wasn't Happy Valley, and thank goodness it wasn't Bloody Basin. But here I am at the trailhead. It's just off Snibley Hill Road, and as you look back, you can see some of the homes in Sedona. But we're heading toward the east. There's Snibley Hill Road that you could actually drive along. And well, this hike is about a six and a half, seven mile round trip hike around that side of the mountain. I'll tell you a secret in a bit. If you want to get to Merry-Go-Round Rock, there's a shorter way than doing this long hike. But I had to test out my leg and I decided I'm going the scenic route and making the hike. Again, this is the Munns Wagon Trail to Merry-Go-Round Rock. And as you hike, if you bring a lunch, there are a couple places where we actually past picnic tables so you can stop and have a bite to eat sit down but on this day it was sunny and hot and well if I was gonna rest I'd probably wanna get out of the sun no water was running in that stream and you'll come to a couple different trails but again just stay on the Munns wagon trail Got a map, though it doesn't show Merry-Go-Round Rock, but it's at the very end of the trail. And here's the secret. Snebley Hill Road oftentimes is not far from the trail. If you've got a four-wheel high-clearance vehicle, you can drive the road and actually drive basically right to Merry-Go-Round Rock. So you don't have to do this six and a half, seven mile hike. A lot of the vehicles were the pink Jeeps tours. And here's the trail, a little overgrown in this spot. But most areas, the trail was easy to follow. And even though there's elevation gains going up and down, I didn't consider it a particularly challenging trail, although I think it was rated as difficult. Some beautiful areas that you'll miss out in the Jeep rides, seeing some of the flowers and vegetation along the trail. Should I say spectacular? Well, it is kind of spectacular. And even the century plants. Here's your first trivia question. How often does a century plant bloom? Did you guess once every hundred years? Well, if you did, you'd be wrong. Because in reality, they bloom after 25, 30 years. Now, trivia question two. How many times will a century plant bloom? This is my trail now. If you said once, you'd be correct. Because after it blooms, cool. it puts all its energy and growth into the shoot and the bloom, that it dies. A slot there. So after the 25, 30 years that it takes to bloom, it's done. There's a trail. There's the Red Rocks of Sedona. Looking back where I came from was down in the valley there. Century plant is a type of agave and parts of it are edible, including the flower, the stalk, the leaves, and sap. You'll see that this trail actually crosses Snebley Hill Road several times. And now I finally get my first view of 
merry-go-round rock and it's off there to the left side there's the rock that I'll be where on. the famous picture is taken I should also mention that since it's accessible by four-wheel vehicle it's also a popular place for weddings particularly in the evening just as the sun sets so while you may not encounter anyone on the trail, as you hike to Merry-Go-Round Rock, once you get there, there may be a number of people. And there's the little arch keyhole that you look through to take that photo that I posted at the start. And there's the little rock ridge that you stand on. Looks like I'm the only one here this day. So I set up my tripod so I could take my picture standing out on that rock. Put the phone on the tripod. Got to jump across the little crevice. Then there's actually a little spot here that you got to climb down to get out on that rock. As you watch me, I'm walking along and... I think I actually sit down as I look and assess how I get down there. Oh, I can just sit down, put my feet down, and then I'm across. And then you just have to climb up on the rock. So some of the weddings that are done, they just take pictures and view it straight from here. Or a little to my left, there's another nice spot that you could set a tripod and take some nice pictures of people standing out there on the rock with the background of Sedona and Red Rocks. And you'll see I was doing something. Well, I'm holding my selfie stick with my 360 camera and trying to take some photos. So we'll have to see if any of those come out. Leaning over a little bit to get it down low, get it up high, get a variety of views. I never know what's going to look best. But the rock's fairly large, so you don't feel too uncomfortable standing out there. But it'd definitely be bad if you fell off the edge. So you still got to be careful. I guess going back to my song reference from the freeway signs, carefree highway. Well, you don't want to be too carefree or you'll end up with the next highway sign, Bloody Basin. Even though there were a number of tour jeeps and other jeeps and four-wheel vehicles on Snebley Hill Road, you can see that I've got the place to myself. So I kind of got lucky. And I just took my time. Now I've set my 360 camera down. And so now I can just pose on the rock. Trouble is, I don't know what should I do to pose. So I tried jumping. That's always good. Once you jump up in the air, then I can take a free shot of that from the video and it looks kind of cool and I take my hat off so you can see my bald head but someone might do a nice yoga pose or something that looks a lot better than this so when you get to that spot well be prepared for what you're gonna do what you think looks cool and then when I'm done well I hike back climb up the little ridge there and I do it the same way I got down. I just hop up on my backside, roll around, stand up. All easier said than done for an old geezer that's just hiked a long ways. Nice gain of elevation. Is somewhat tired. And even though you can't really see this little spot here that I jump across, you don't want to fall down there either, because that's a long ways. 
but I still haven't got that view through the cave. So how do you do that? Well, it's cool to take your picture just standing on that rock. The shot you really want is through this opening in the cave. And you can see you can do it various ways. Do you want a lot of light, a little light? Or do you this, want just the darkness and just this is spot. Then that opening on the cave? Well, I hadn't come all this way to not get my photo standing up on that arch. So I look down and I go, how the heck do I get down to that spot? You definitely need shoes with a good grip, and it's not so easy. But I climbed down there, set the tripod up, and put my phone on the camera, and then I climbed back out and over to the rock. And these are the videos that I got. It was kind of windy and I actually lucked out because when I returned I hadn't been back for too long when the wind blew my tripod over but I was there to catch it so it didn't fall over while I was doing any of this and it probably took me at least I don't know the video is about 10-12 minutes so it took me five minutes or so to get over there and to get back down to that spot. But in the meanwhile, again, what do I do while I'm up on the rock? Once I'd done everything I could think of, then I have to return and climb back down to that little window so I can shut off my phone. I cut out most of it, but I finally have made it back. So I thought maybe I'll stand in that little opening so you can get an idea of how big that is. But I was thrilled. I'd found the location and got my photo. Here's a few of the stills that I took from the video. Me holding my head out, pointing off in the direction, and even jumping. You can see I actually got off the ground to spec. There was when I was leaving, and in the cave entrance, and then one that even if you don't hike down there, you can still get some spectacular photos. I thought I'd show you a perspective with the 360 camera of standing out on that rock, kind of what that's like. You can see out there's the window where I had set up my tripod. There's me standing on the rock. Kind of a 360 view. It doesn't necessarily look like anything special when you first walk out there. When you see the photos that are taken, you go, yep, it's kind of a special spot. You can see the little ledge that I hop down to get on that rock. And here's just a 360 of me holding the 360 camera of the entire area. I made a complete 360 of the whole area so you could see from every angle. But you just get some spectacular photos whether you go down look through that hole or not. But just standing up on Merry-Go-Round Rock, looking down to the valley, spectacular. You see a couple of the pink Jeep tours going on, and they'll be up at the rock shortly. There's that little keyhole. I can back. And there's the road. On the road. Again, if you don't want to do well, the six and a half, seven mile hike, see. You can just drive up that My road. My vehicle could have made it. So on the way back, I decided to hike down it. And I decided I could have made it in my Jeep Renegade. But there's Merry-Go-Round Rock, my last look. And all the Jeeps that passed me as I hiked back 
Asked me if I was okay. Did I need water? Well, I was okay. And I got to see a view that most of them didn't get to. Because I hiked. Well, hope you enjoyed the video. Looks like I'm back to the parking lot. Then, out of tradition, I went to Chipotle. Even got a picture of the moon next to the mountain. Right from Chipotle. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.